And uh, this was really popular at the time, and I think it was in 2005 or six we came up with this idea to put a really big bore and a short stroke. So this 126 was an interesting engine package for sale. We had exclusive rights on it for the first three or four years, and then it went public, and now they don't make them anymore. But it's got B2 heads on it. It had a four and three-eighths bore and a 4.1 stroke. So it moved the, L, the RPM elevation range, went up, went up higher RPM on it. So, hey, Tammy, hey, Bob, it's good to see you guys, man. But anyway, it was a neat engine at the time. Let me see what it says here. I, I remember we put a, um, the, you remember the Tribute 145? It had the big bore and the big stroke. Well, this was a short stroke version of it, and it was so short this way that it would fit into a stock frame without notching the frame or anything, but it was very popular. And I believe that almost all of them are still running out there today, man. I see so many people mention, I got a 126 from you in 07 and 08 and 09 and 10. So that 126 is a really popular piece. But I, if you ever wondered what that is sitting in the background, that was a display version of that engine. Doesn't have any parts in it, it's just cool looking. And then over here, this is a neat piece. I know you can't see it very well, but here is a stock Harley timing chain on a twin cam. It's got tensioners and a chain, and then the SNS gear drive is this one, and it's just so easy to turn compared to this one. So if you ever wonder what that stuff is in here, it's just been display stuff in my showroom for all this time. But anyway, I'm gonna move back over to the Tech Talk stuff. We got a lot of good things to go over today. I'm mostly gonna talk about rings, and I'm gonna talk about pistons, and I'm gonna talk about spring so i'm gonna change this over to the other way to the board there we go tech talk number 59 can y'all believe that's tech talk number 59 and for the ones that ask me every week i got my puppy socks on today everybody likes a puppy ah <laughs> uh, I got on my puppy socks. Hear you loud and clear. Great. Tech Talk Tuesday, number 59. Wow, next week will be. Hey, John, Curtis, Charlie, Wade, Rich. How's it going, buddy? Yeah, I miss y'all too. Maybe I'll come see you one day soon. All right, I want to talk a little bit about the rings. I drew a little cutaway side view of a piston. Ring tension, top ring, second ring, oil ring, and then I got some stuff I want to talk to you about, two ring pistons. And these, I got to say this, man. I, it's almost like a standard disclosure or standard uh, default, but these are my opinions, okay? Uh, my, these are ideas I have. I didn't invent them. Listen to me, y'all. I did not invent this stuff, okay? It was a, I was blessed by the good Lord to give me the opportunities uh, the talent, the the experience, and uh, <laughs> maybe maybe I had he gave me a, a little, enough of an IQ to put it all together where I can share it with you guys and we were able to go out and win some races. So, <clears throat> hey, hey, there's the Reese's. Hey, Stephen, David, good to see you guys' name. Martin, I'm not gonna call everybody's name, but I just I'm, I'm gonna tell you that um, this is these are um things we do this is how we uh, um this is how we put it together and i want to tell you some ideas of what we've learned about that if you if you get offended by you thinking that i am inventing this stuff or this is the only way to go and then what you do or what you have done is wrong that is totally off this subject i am only telling you what we do okay and no arguments no contest this is just what we do and a lot of people want to know so we share it okay I got a little packages over here on the side from Total Seal, the top groove rings we use, the second groove rings we use, and the bottom groove rings we use. And there's a lot going on right here with this in the ring tension area. The top ring goes here, the second ring goes here, and the oil ring goes here. So if I was to draw, oh, let me try and draw a little piece. Top ring, barrel face, goes in here like this and the second ring that's a little exaggerated and upside down <laughs> in case y'all aren't paying attention 
<laughs> All right, and then an oil ring is three, the ones we use are three pieces. Got a really thin rail and a really thin rail. And then we use an expander and I'll show you the pieces. This is a cutaway. So how these pieces look, if you were to take this piston and slice it right through here. Top land, second land, third land, oil ring. So we got a top ring, accumulator groove, second land, second ring, and then the third land, and then the oil ring. And I'm going to break those down and tell you some ideas. These are just my ideas. This is what I think. Um, yeah, ring seal matters, grumpy's accumulator groove, yep. I'm going to tell you something, y'all. Please understand, I didn't invent any of this. All I did was gather up a bunch of information by going slow, blowing up, winning races, losing races, getting my butt drug in the dirt by making mistakes. But we weren't scared to make mistakes. We weren't scared to go and try. So what happens after 40 years of doing this every day for a day job instead of a hobby we learned a lot, and, and now it's my turn to share it with you guys, okay? So I'm going to share some stuff that I've learned about it, okay? Now, the top ring can't expand against the cylinder wall unless it is sealed here. It can't seal unless it is sealed here, and it has to have room here for the pressure to get behind it. Okay, so when the crankcase pressure gets in here on top of this ring, it runs around in here and it goes behind this and pushes it out. Now on the stuff that we do, even for our street Milwaukee 8s, we use gas ports and I'll talk about why and what they do in a little bit, but I'm gonna expand on this ring tension deal for a minute. Everybody following so far? Donald, George, trial and error is a big part. Don't be scared. That's right. If you're scared, you better stay at the house because only the people that sit on the couch and flip the channels are the ones that don't make mistakes. And you know what? They don't have any wallies. I'll tell you what, man. A big trophy case full of trophies and wallies and awards is from a lot of mistakes. It isn't from a lot of wins. If you don't make a lot of mistakes and you don't learn from them, then you... That's just a different deal, man. But anyway, let's go through here. All right, this is the accumulator groove. Now, the accumulator groove is a expansion chamber It's an expansion chamber for the gases that are going to get by this top ring, and they're going to go by and try and get in the bottom end, and then they'll get built up on top of this second ring, which is a an oil scraper, I'll tell you about that in a minute. And then it has room right here between, let's draw a cylinder wall, okay? When these rings go, go out and touch the cylinder wall, this is exaggerated. This pressure at some RPM, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, it leaks by and it sits up on top of this ring and it turns around and wants to go and build up pressure in here. But this accumulator groove goes all the way around the piston and it gives a place for that pressure to build up on top of this ring under this ring there's the accumulator groove i hope y'all can see that that's why i drew the picture kind of big all right we'll talk about the gas ports i see people asking about that now let's talk about why this ring leaks okay when this piston goes up and down, and this ring is trying to hang on, there's 720 degrees of rotation going on in here. Okay, I, I hope you can see this. So we, I've done this a bunch of times, but this is the intake stroke, the piston goes to the bottom. Then on the compression stroke, the piston goes back up to the top. On the power stroke, the piston goes back to the bottom. And on the exhaust stroke, the piston goes back to the top. The ring does, all these rings, they do all of that. This one goes intake, compression, power, uh, exhaust, and it takes 720 degrees. Here's 180, here's 180, 
here's 180, here's 180. So if you think that your engine only takes 360 degrees to go around, I want you to know that it takes 720 degrees to do all four strokes. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. So that's intake, compression, power, exhaust. Okay, so these rings, oh, sorry, I kicked that with my doggy socks, puppy socks. These rings are trying to hang on for dear life. So in the top ring, I hope you can see this. I'm gonna draw a big exaggerated top ring land. All right, this ring is hanging out in here. Top ring land, top ring. This piston's hanging out, this ring's hanging out in here and when the piston goes down, this ring is rubbing on the cylinder wall so it goes up and it's, and it's up against the top. When the piston goes back up, it runs down and it's sealed across the bottom. And when the piston goes back down, it jumps up here and runs along the top. And so what happens in this groove is we end up with torsional twist in there where this ring will be sitting in here like this. Now this is exaggerated, but this is really crappy right here. This is not what you want, okay? So what we gotta do is I like to have, to have very precise parts. So we ask Total Seal to make us, for our street bikes and our street engines, to make this 036, 035, 4 C33 steel AP ring. This is a very lightweight ring, okay? It's very narrow this way, super narrow this way, and this seals up everything. And you wouldn't think a little ring like this would seal up, but it does, and I'm gonna tell you why it does. It's because we get our pistons custom made with almost zero clearance right here. We have this tenths, tenths, side clearance, okay? The piston is cut exactly to the ring size. So this ring, if you look, this ring is made for us. You can spec whatever you want. This one's made at 035.4, 354 thousandths of an inch. This is diamond ground on both sides. It is very precise. It is very exact. It has a barrel face finish. It's made out of tool steel and it has the AP coatings. It lasts. Nobody even knows how long they last. NASCAR quality, wide open all day, super stuff, okay? Now, if the, the rings are only as good as their piston. And the piston and the rings are only as good as the cylinder bore. So we have to do a really good job fitting and finishing the cylinders and the pistons to m take advantage of a super tight fit right here and a super... Um, finished ring. So we have a really precise ring and a really precise ring land here. Back in the day, we used to cut our own ring lands with a dovetail tool. The tool would look like, put it in the lathe, and the tool would look like this. And we would use that and plunge into the side of the piston and cut this ring land. That is so wrong, and we didn't know any better. So now, you have to have some CNC equipment, real high quality, and you have, you have the bottom groove gets cut with this bit, top groove gets cut with this bit, and they have to be precise. More than one bit doing that, and then they're finished. If we had a magnifying glass, I could blow this up and show you how super finished this ring line is. But like I said, it's only got tenths of a thousandths clearance. All right, how does the pressure in the combustion chamber get on top, get to this ring to blow it out. Well, we use gas ports. So here's the top of the piston and we drill these holes. Well, I have the piston manufacturer drill this hole for us. And it's drilled through the top of the piston so the combustion pressure goes through here, builds, fills this groove, fills this area, the back clearance and pushes the ring against the cylinder wall. But it only is there, y'all, for one of the strokes. That's what makes the difference. Instead of having a really tight ring that has a lot of tension and a really loose ring land so that the pressure can get back here and get behind it, we have a tight piston with a tight side clearance and we let the pressure come through here and blow it out. But out of the 720 degrees of rotation, you have intake, 
intake stroke. There's no pressure going through here, so these rings can be pretty lazy, they can be pretty weak, and they don't rob horsepower. Then you have the compression stroke, where you're going back up and you're squeezing it. Well, that ring, right through here, that compression blows this ring out, so it puts a little tension against the cylinder wall so it doesn't leak, so you make more compression. Then the spark plug lights and fires and the piston goes back down. And now you're 500,000 PSI in the chamber blowing through this oil, through this gas port, blowing this ring out. And then as soon as it gets to the bottom and the pressure is gone, this ring relaxes again and it does not take away horsepower, doesn't rob with friction. Then the piston turns around and goes back up to shove the exhaust out. But there's not a lot of ring tension to, required for that. We, really, we need good ring tension on the intake stroke. Not a lot, but good to seal the intake so that we pull in all the air through the headwork that we can. Then we need good ring seal, not maximum ring seal, in order for the piston to go back up on the compression stroke. But when that spark plug lights and that mixture fires, you want the ultimate compression. So you want this combustion pressure to go in here and blow this ring out the cylinder. Now, at some RPM, we're gonna get really microscopic now. At some RPM, this piston is gonna go so fast. And this tenth of clearance, which you're gonna to have to exaggerate, creates a space here between the piston and the ring. A little bit, itty bitty space right here. At some RPM, because it has to have it, because if you have it too tight, you'll have the heat, the temperature of both of these pieces expand at different rates and you could, what they call, micro weld these rings to the ring lands. But anyway, when this piston's going up and down 200 times a second, 100 times a second, sometimes this ring, the heavier it is, the harder it is to hang on. So you'll end up with this ring moving around in here. And you wouldn't think it would move much with a half a thou clearance right here. But this ring can move around and when, it, when the piston goes to the top, TDC at 6,000 or 7,000 RPM, piston goes to the top and stops. This ring keeps going because it has inertia. This ring keeps going. And when it breaks this seal right here under this ring, that combustion pressure goes and it blows past that top ring. So you want this ring to stay sealed as long as you can. And the gas ports work at higher RPM than no gas ports. They don't hurt at low RPM what everybody thinks or what they've read or see on the internet, but it helps at high RPM where you're really making some, some power. Now, when the piston goes up and the ring keeps going, you lose the ring seal and the inertia of the ring bouncing up and down inside the, in that ring land allows a little bit of pressure to escape into the second ring. And the reason we don't use gapless second rings or gapless top rings, which I'll go another a little while, but the gapless second ring is not what you want, in my opinion, because you don't want all the pressure to build up on top of the second ring. You don't want an oil scraper to be a compression ring. This is an oil scraper. There's two things. Two things this ring does is it takes heat out of the piston, puts it in the cylinder wall, and it cleans the oil. It's a squeegee to clean the oil off of the cylinder wall. So when that pressure builds up on top of this ring, it will build up in here. If there's no accumulator groove here, and it's just a straight piece like you see, 99% of the pistons have a second land that is solid. When this, that leaves very little room between the top ring and the second ring, and this area gets filled soon. And when it does, it uh, helps this ring push off and close this clearance up and lets it leak more. And as soon as it, all of that lines up, like the stars line up where this, piston, this ring comes loose and this ring's got pressure built up on top of it, when it all happens, remember, this is a squeegee. It is shaped like an oil scraper. This is not a compression ring. So this pressure will blow right by this ring. This ring is designed to keep the oil under here and the pressure, if the pressure gets to it, it will open up, let the pressure go by. That's when your crankcase breather weeps oil out of your, the breather's on your head, they weep oil out, it gets through the little air cleaner, goes back through your throttle body, and it puts carbon crap on the back of your intake valve because it's getting oily mixture inside the air going through the throttle body in your Harley or car or whatever. But you, that's why you want to keep this clean, and there's some really great products out there that do uh, crankcase ventilation. You can keep the, uh, the oil pressure, the ventilation crankcase blow by out of the air cleaner, out of your throttle body, and it makes your intake valves run clean on the back. It also gives you more power because it has pure cleaner air and fuel going in rather than dirty exhaust and oily mist 
going in. All right, another thing I want to tell you that's interesting, our three-piece oil ring. It's three pieces, got an expander and two really thin rails. The one we order, when you get these from us, you'll see. But what's neat about this one is, is it's three millimeters wide, which is really big so that we can control a lot of oil. If this ring can't handle the oil, then this Napier second ring can. So I, we got double um, effort to keep uh, the engine from smoking and burning oil. We try to keep the oil below the second ring, and we use this ring to not put too much pressure on the cylinder wall, but control a lot of the oil. This is marked right here. You'll notice this. It says 13 to 14 pounds, that little pound side. That means if you put this ring on a piston, stuck it in a cylinder, and you pull it out, it'll take 13 pounds of pressure to pull this piston out. And how do we know that? Well, we measured it for years, and I'm going to tell you something. This is a really, really crude tool, and some of you old guys will recognize this. When we bought our Lincos back in the 80s and 90s, if you got a Lenco four-speed, three-speed, or a five-speed, it came with one of these so you could set the tower pressure on your shifter shifters. But if you hook this on the wrist pin, and you pull the wrist pin up through the piston, pull it up through the cylinder, and it will tell you how much ring tension you had. <laughs> here's a piston. Here's a wrist pin. Let me show you how we do it. It's pretty crude, but this is how we learned. So you stick this in the cylinder with the three-piece oil ring on it, and then you pull till this piston comes through. And when it does, it has this little telltale meter on here that says that was eight and a half pounds. These rings, new out of the bag, we have them custom cut for us to 13 pounds. Now, there's a lot of people out there that are trying to run super lightweight rings, oil rings. This is not the place to save money, time. This is not the place to get rid of ring pressure. I mean, you need oil seal pressure, oil ring pressure. Not a lot, but when you buy just the regular old super trick kit that comes in 99% of the kits out there, it's a high tension oil ring that has about 20, 25 pounds on this thing. And let me tell you something, when you pull 25 pounds on this to pull a piston through, a cylinder, oh, that's 25 pounds. And I'm telling you, it took almost all my might to pull that. This piston is set up for us to, and we check them, it will come in at about 13 or 14 pounds of oil ring tension. That's enough to keep the oil off the cylinder without robbing horsepower trying to keep, trying to uh, seal that up. Last thing, second ring. We'll blow up an expanded version of the second ring. Then we're going to move on right quick. Second ring is an oil scraper, and it's a Napier. So it, this is the only part that hits the cylinder wall. So when it wears in, this will get a bigger point. Pretty soon it'll look like this. Pretty soon it'll look like this. And when it, this is exaggerated, so when, it, when it's fully worn... It will be this all of this will be have hit the cylinder wall but there here's this little hook to let the oil come under the squeegee and run back down to this oil ring let me tell you about the oil ring in, a, in conjunction with that you see these drain back holes these drain back holes are what this oil ring scrapes off the cylinder wall and what is left from the second ring scraping this oil back down to the screw and then they are drilled to the interior of the piston. Can you see these holes? I know my hand's shaking because, ooh, I'm getting older and I'm excited about it. But these are drain back holes. All the pistons have them, okay? And these are to let the oil off the cylinder wall. And then if they're set right, you have just enough oil left for this to look beautiful after you run it several thousand miles on the highway. This will still look good because you didn't have too much oil, but you ended up letting enough leak by to keep this cylinder wall and this piston skirt looking good. But you don't want any oil to get by this ring. You want some oil to get by this ring, and you want it to get to the second ring. And you want, after that, you don't want any oil above that. You want the, the, all the combustion to be contained by this ring. 
You want all the combustion to be contained by this ring, and, if, and you want the oil to be contained by this ring, and let this ring do the most of the oil control, but if anybody, any oil gets by, let the second ring pull it down the cylinder wall, and then this, this accumulator groove is, goes between this, the oil scraper second ring and the top compression ring. And then it gives you this little trench in here to accumulate that pressure. It's called an accumulator groove. Okay, I think I'm finished with that part. Now the gas parts. Ooh, I gotta tell you about the gas parts. The gas parts, some of them have a bad rap because people don't really know what they do, but they don't wear your rings out because if you change over to the correct top ring, if you change over to the correct top groove, this ring has low tension, it has low, low um, uh, friction against the cylinder wall, and it uses these gas ports to seal it up. So we've all seen this really neat thing on the internet where the marketing people have tried to tell, sell us about cool rings, you know, topless, uh, gapless top rings, uh, top rings with, uh, with, with gas ports on them. Those are all cool projects and cool pieces. But look, think about it. If I had a normal piston and I put, and it, and it had loose clearance in here, I believe you could use that ring that has the gas ports on top of the ring. But if you're going to do a good job with the top gas ports, which are my favorite that are using all the racing engines, is you got to have a tight clearance here so this ring can't move around and it uses just the gas ports to push it out. So somebody says, well, what, what if the gas ports carbon shut? Well, guess what? They're going to be so awesome until they carbon shut. But if you're doing a good job using your engine with all of its capability, you'll keep these little ports will stay clean from use. And if you're just going to idle down the highway and never check the combustion pressure, with the throttle back tire clutch and the g-force in your seat and your handlebars and your arms which is the part i love about my engines is how much hard they pull how much they coil bind the seat springs how much they coil bind the foam rubber in the seat and how much they pull the handlebars out of my hands that's why i like g-force and all of these things i've been talking about help us increase the g-force cylinder prep is really important you got to have it honed right and you gotta get that done to where it'll work. But today's not the day because guess what? We're running out of time. But I'm gonna share with you a, a 200 mile an hour pro stock piston, five and a half inch bore. You can see how much bigger it is than the Milwaukee eight piston. But this one has all the gas ports, as many as we could get in there. And it has the little babyest rings. These are only 25 or 26 thou wide and then it has a big accumulated groove and then a really skinny second ring. But it still has the good old three millimeter oil ring so we don't get any contamination in the combustion chamber. But you'll end up with some great questions. You'll end up with some good ideas and we'll talk about all that stuff on another episode. But I see time is up and I have to go again. But what a blessing to let you guys in on this a little bit and for you to share it with me because it's worthless if I keep it to myself. But anyway, um, send me uh, the emails, george at starracing.com. Send me the um, notes on Insta Instagram, uh, Bryce Star, Star Bryce, whatever. I can't remember what it is. You can type it and find me. But look, I just want you guys to know that you can uh, email Instant Messenger. You can Facebook, Instagram, and the email george at starracing.com. If you can't get me on the phone, that's fine. If you don't get me on an email, you gotta try again, man, cause I'll tell you something, diligence pays off. Uh, I didn't win the first race I went to. I didn't win the second one. Matter of fact, it was a bunch of them before we started learning how to win. So if you give up on one try, man, you won't get there. So keep trying, keep sending me info. Thank y'all for sharing. May God bless y'all and pray for all of us that are having the troubles and um, I will too. So. Thank you for watching. Please tune in again soon at Tech Talk number 60. Be caught up with my age soon. God bless y'all. Thank you.